What would it take to transform your life? To transform Kurdistan? To transform the world? I'm Lena Kay, and I empower people to transform their lives and maximize their potential so that they can achieve what they want. Today, I'm going to share with you three steps that I use to transform any area of my life. It's what my friends, my family and clients use to transform their health, relationships, business, finance and anything else. I'll also share with you why it is relevant in Kurdistan today. But first, I want to tell you a story about a little Kurdish boy who is a refugee. Born in Erbil, the doctors told his mother that he had died in her belly and that he will be stillborn. His mother gave birth, the doctor announced him dead and walked out the room. A nurse came in, slapped him a few times and he started to cry. A few years later, when Saddam was bombing the Kurds with chemical warfare, the little boy's family decided to flee to Europe. They went horseback through mountains, they were smuggled into Iran and eventually end up in London as refugees of war. He went to school, college, university, and by that time his family were working class and weren't the wealthiest, so he got a part-time job while he was in university because London is one of the most expensive cities in the world to live in. The company he was working for saw leadership skills in him. They offered him money to leave university. He did. He managed 10 gambling establishments in London and he'd done that for several years before he moved on to business banking and again, they saw leadership skills and they promoted him to be team leader. Everything looked good on the outside but on the inside, there was a storm brewing. Have you ever put a smile on your face when on the inside there's a storm? Turbulent relationships with his family led him to be thrown out. And he found himself depressed, with a brain tumor, suffering from anxiety, living in a homeless hostel, and highly medicated by doctors. In his mid-twenties, he had a breakdown. He went from corporate leadership to living on benefits. He hated his life, he hated his situation. He was in pain and he wanted change so badly, but things seemed to go from bad to worse. Every time he took a step forward, something happened that took him two steps back. He was spiraling into darkness and addiction. Then one day, he discovered a video on YouTube that changed his life forever. It was talking about the power of the mind and how you are not a victim of your circumstances. You are a creator of them. He thought, how could this be? You mean I created my misery? I created my pain? I created my brain tumor? He thought, surely someone would have told me this information. So he'd done some research into science, religion, spirituality. What he found difficult to find was any evidence against this. You see, physics says that reality is created from your perception. Neuroscience says your brain controls your biochemistry. Religion says you are created in the image and likeness of the creator. And spirituality says that life doesn't happen to you, it happens from you. He liked the idea, he thought, if I created my own hardship, maybe I can uncreate them. Against the advice of the doctors, he decided to come off the medication and he started to self-heal. What does this mean? <laughs> it means he was able to create better results in his biochemistry using his mind than the medicated drugs. He got better. He repaired the relationships with his family. He replaced his television with books. 
and he improved his relationship with money. See, no one told him the most powerful knowledge that helped him change his life. Not the education system, not religion, not the government, and nobody around him. And now he discovered this powerful truth. He wanted to share it with everyone he could. He trained, he coached, and he helped other people to develop who they are so they can achieve what they want. You see, that little boy was statistically destined to lose. Statistically as a refugee, statistically as someone who suffered from depression and countless other illnesses, statistically as someone on the benefit system. But he decided to change his life, and the only way he found out he could do that was by changing the way he thinks. Now, everything in that story is true, except for one factor. The little boy was actually a little girl, and that little girl was me. <laughs> In the process of my own healing, my father was diagnosed with Alzheimer's disease. In the last five years, he's forgotten how to read, how to write, how to clothe himself, feed himself, and he's forgotten who his wife is, as well as his three children. I remember a friend told me years ago, People don't really value their minds until they see someone who has lost theirs. Let me ask you, do you value your mind? Because it's the most powerful asset that you have. In my process of healing and transformation, I use the following three steps. And they work for me, they work for my clients. This is where you can get some substance from this talk and you can relate it to your life. I could talk to you for the whole weekend just on step one, but we don't have that luxury of time. So, step one is focus and attention equals creation. Most people, they lose right here on step one. Step one is so important for you to focus on what you want. What is your dream? What's your vision? What's your goal? And stick to it. This is not the time to get practical. People, they think, oh, I'd love to have this. I'd love to do that, but... How am I going to do it? Or they talk to someone, and someone talks them out of it. Don't be practical in step one. This is just about focusing, clarifying what you want. Make sure you write it down. Get very specific on what you want. Because the brain will give you what you want. You see, most people, they focus on their problems, and they get more problems. Why? Because what you focus on, you're directing your energy. So focus on what you want. The second step... <laughs> okay, your ideas are very, very powerful. Please do cherish them, because ideas change the world. Everything on this planet besides nature was once an idea in the mind of a human being. Okay, step two is your self-mastery. What do you believe about the things that you want? Because you see, life doesn't give you what you want. It gives you what you believe. If what you want is here and your belief is here, life will give you this every single time. So self-mastery is about knowing how do you feel? What do you believe? Because you are designed Okay. Your clicker, guys. Okay. You're designed to win, but you're programmed to lose. It is so important what you believe in. And your self-mastery, only you can do that. I worked with a woman. She had a lot of pain in her knee. 
and doctors told her she has arthritis and that it will progressively get worse. I said, don't worry about what the doctors believe. What matters is what you believe. I said, focus on the good leg. Give praise for the parts of your body that are working. Maybe exercise a little bit. We worked on her belief system. In three weeks, she told me her pain was hardly there anymore. In six months, what was amazing was that her blood test showed her arthritis had reversed, and the doctor said her knee looks like she's had an operation. What you believe is very, very important. Self-mastery, this is your inner work. Only you can do this work, but it is worth it. So when you go home today, think about what you want. Where are your beliefs? And your job is to line them up, because you always get what you believe. Step three is take action, but wait. Imagine you go forward five years from now and everything in your life is 10 out of 10. Your health, your business, your relationships. You are more happy, healthy, successful and loved than you ever have been. Would you think, feel and act differently than you do today? The answer is usually yes. What I suggest is you act from that level of consciousness. Don't wait for five years to feel like that. You can feel like that today. And then you take action. Then you take the next step, just one step towards what you want. I worked with a client. He wanted to get promoted at work. He wanted to become a manager. I said, okay, act like it. Act like a manager. Because leadership is an attitude. I said, work hard, have a good attitude, have a positive mental attitude, stay behind later, arrive on time. It took several weeks. His company approached him. They wanted to train him to become a manager, and now he has a better position and higher wages. You can achieve whatever you want. We can create whatever changes we want to develop in this country if we focus we align our emotions and our beliefs, and then we take action. So step three is about imagining you've already got it, and then from that new conscious awareness, then you take action. And why am I telling you all this anyway? I'll share with you some things that help me understand this a little bit better, and then I'll tell you how this is relevant in Kurdistan today. Negative thoughts and emotions, they weaken your immune system. So judgment, complaining, any negative emo emotion, it weakens your body. Scientists say we have 50 to 70,000 thoughts per day. But 90% of them are the same ones as you had yesterday. The problem with that is that the same thoughts create the same emotion. That creates the same action, which gets the same results, and then you get the same thoughts, and so the cycle of creation continues. You see, most people wait for outside circumstances to change for them to change, but life is totally opposite. You must change on the inside in order to see change on the outside. Let me ask you something. Who here has a mobile phone, laptop, computer device, something? Please put your hands up. Okay, great, thank you. Now, if I told you I sent you an email with a virus that would destroy all the data on your phone or your device, hands up how many people would open that email? Okay, so no one would open an email and download a virus into their device. But you download viruses into the most important computer in the world, your brain. Negative thoughts are like a virus. It is very important that we become aware of our thoughts because the more negative programs that we watch, they train you. They train your thoughts, they train your beliefs, they train your expectation that this is life. 
It's called television programming for a reason. Yes, it can be used for good sometimes. However, what would happen if you just switched your television off for 30 days? What would you do? I don't know. Maybe you read books. Maybe you wrote your thoughts down. Maybe you had more intimate conversations. Maybe you found some hobbies and interests. You see, everyone wants society to change. Everyone wants social transformation. But you cannot have social transformation without individual transformation. A few years ago, I saw Kurdistan go from here to here and then drop again so drastically because as wonderful as it was to see the malls and developments, there was one vital factor left out the whole equation. The minds and development of the people When it comes to negative programming, it's very, aware, it's very important that we become aware of it because only then can we change it. Bear with me, okay. Look, the history of Kurdistan is as rich as the land. You know, from waterfalls and mountains to oil and flowers and pomegranates and natural springs, and the list can go on. We know where Kurdistan has been. We know where Kurdistan is today. But where are we headed? And who gets to decide? What would happen if there was a transformation in the hearts of every man and woman? a revolution of self-transformation and self-development because self-education is the most important type of education. What would happen? Because is it right that more people know more about celebrities and singers than they know about their own body and their brain? What about that there's more makeup stores in the world than bookstores? You know, I read a shocking statistic that said 90% of women are not happy with the way that they look. So then what is the benefit of a society of young girls, generations that have been trained and programmed to believe it's okay to be a Ferrari with no engine? When will we stop ignoring the fact that young girls are committing suicide in Kurdistan? What about our women, our mothers, our grandparents who are sitting there for hours and hours watching television programs? that play with their emotions while making their bodies ill from lack of mobility. What's their option? It's shameful for them to do anything else. You see, we know where Kurdistan has been. But who gets to decide the future? Something has to change for things to change. The world is in two extremes. And we will get there. Thank you for your patience. That's why it's good to go first. Thank you. <laughs> it's not working, guys. We only have two slides to go. We can do this, team. Come on. Yes, this, that's the one. That's the one. Yes. So I'll just tell you when to go next, yeah? Look, the world is in two extremes. Extreme poverty, extreme destruction, extreme disease. And then extreme abundance, opportunity, and interconnectedness like we've never seen before in the history of this planet, thanks to technology. What if the future was a reflection of you? Because you see, I believe we can have profit, but well, we can still look after the people and look after our beautiful planet. Next slide, please. 